Hey guys, how's it going? Um, as you can see, I promised I would uh, set you guys up with a repotting video and this is actually going to have a couple of parts because I told you in my last video that I actually ordered a bunch of um, orchids and I would film those as they came in. So this is part one of many. Um, this is the first guy that came in. This is my Trichocentrum Ollie Palmer. And I skipped the unboxing process because it was just the one plant all by itself. And he came um, mounted on a hardwood slab. It was just a plank of wood. He didn't have any roots attached to it. So there was no point in me showing how to soak the, the plank to soften the roots and try to peel everything off. It was pretty basic and straightforward. So I didn't really want to waste any time uh, doing that. So it was just uh, wrapped around a plank with fishing line. I cut the fishing line, it fell right off. And um, that was about a week and a half ago. And I've been keeping it like this. Since it was a mounted plant, I didn't want to pot it up right away in sphagnum moss or bark or I didn't, and I obviously don't want to remount it. Um, I don't have the uh, tools or the necessary environment to grow my orchids on mounts. Um, the most I can do is run my humidifier, which holds about two gallons of water. And it's so dry where I live that there's no possible way that I could keep that running 24 seven to keep the humidity high enough to keep my plants um, on mounts. So this guy came off the mount and he's gonna go into live sphagnum moss. Um, I ordered this off eBay. It's not the best live sphagnum moss. There is a lot of dead stuff in there. But as you can see right here at this corner, especially along here has some really good green live sphagnum moss. So what we're going to do today is pot him up into live sphagnum and um, it's going to be a pretty basic straightforward video. Shouldn't be more than 10 minutes, but I'm going to put you up over here and we'll go from there. So hopefully I can get you guys in a decent view where I'm not in the way. looks pretty decent. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to not block any of the video. I've got my little tub here to put any debris or um, basically anything in here that isn't good and usable. It's just gonna go in the bucket. So it looks like the guy who cut this just basically ripped it out of a bog and threw it in a bag, which is fine. I mean, that means it's still, it's wild good stuff. You know, if you tell right here, that is pretty darn green. And this is how I used to grow all of my orchids, um, or at least most of them anyways. I'd grow them in this really nice green, live sphagnum moss. Right now I'm growing everything in dried New Zealand sphagnum moss, which isn't really the best way. I mean, it works really, really well but it's just not what I would prefer. I would prefer to grow all of my orchids or any of the ones that I could in live sphagnum moss, just because basically instead of taking care of an orchid, you're just taking care of moss. Um, the moss in turn rewards you by taking care of your orchid for you in that it evenly distributes water, nutrients, and all you have to do is just keep this damp, not wet, not soggy, just damp like this, pat it, there's no, there's no water on my hands. It's damp, but it's not wet. And it's been in this bag for probably three weeks now. I ordered this in anticipation of getting a bunch of new plants. So this right here um, is what I'm gonna be using to pot up a bunch of my new orchids. And uh, a lot of my old ones that I have, I would like to convert back to live sphagnum. So this is what I'm gonna use for now. Um, I think I have one, two, three, four. I think I have four other plants I want to put in live sphagnum. So this is a gallon size Ziploc baggie of live sphagnum. So I think this should be enough um, for all the orchids that I need to pot up, but we'll see. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit here. This should be a good start for now. I'm going to dump out this water. This guy's got a really good root system, which is actually really nice. A lot of the plants I get on mounts, they have one or two live roots like these three up here 
and all the rest are just dead aerial routes that died off because either from shipping problems or just they weren't healthy to, to begin with. So I'm actually going to place this guy pretty darn low in here because I want him to retain as much humidity as possible. Um, this is an Oncidium type. It's a mule ear Oncidium is what they're technically called. So I don't want to pot him up too high because he still has a lot of space in that base to grow. And one of the things that I've always heard with orchids is you never want to overpot, especially with certain varieties because they, they like to be root bound. They like to feel secure. And when you're potting in live sphagnum, it's a very, very open, light, airy potting medium. And when you use live sphagnum like this, you can't jam it, jam pack it in like you see in nursery containers or nursery pots. Um, because that's obviously dead moss and you can shove that in there. It's not going to grow. It's not going to do anything. Um, it's just used as an anchor to hold the orchid in the pot. So in situations like this, I'm just going to keep this very airy, very light, and I'm going to pot them down a lot lower in the pot than a lot of people normally would just because, um, I want him to establish a root system down low start circling the pot so it feels root bound, so it feels secure and safe. And then um, as more growth come up and mature, um, I'll deal with it then um, with repotting and whatnot. So um, a lot of these are really, really good strands. And uh, the ones that don't look the best, um, I'll probably just keep in the very bottom. Um, basically everything that's more towards the center is gonna die off and just turn into this regular dried, um, brown sphagnum moss and then everything that's around the outside of the container and down underneath is obviously going to be exposed to light so that stuff is going to continue to photosynthesize and grow so i think a lot of the stuff that's dead like this i don't want that in there this end is okay but that is basically just a string of stuff that's going to rot so i'm going to toss that water by the way that i dumped out because that was for him and only him I do not share water with any of my orchids. Um, sharing water just leads to another way for a virus, a disease, um, a pest, a, like slugs, snails, what have you, to go from one orchid to another. And when you share water, you create a pathway for those things to travel on. So um, this water is going to get dumped along with all of the brown bits here that I'm not going to be using and everything else is going to go inside with the orchid. So like that's a pretty decent piece. Um, I'm going to snip that off but this is going to go more towards the bottom because I don't see it really working its way up the sides like say this piece right here. This is a really good really bright green beautiful piece of moss and that's going to grow straight up the sides and it's going to look really really nice. So basically anything that doesn't look premium quality is just going to go down towards the bottom and I'm just going to start kind of placing things in here very lightly and I might even um, push these guys down. Now this guy is I'm assuming a division of a larger plant because he came with these three really big growths and each one of them has I don't know if you can see that from there I'll bring it in closer each one of these Older growth has a dried flower spike on it. There's one here and there's one down in here right there. So each one of these has bloomed in the past. Um, this other one, yep, even this, this one right here, I don't know if you can see inside there, but it's got, there's roots in the way. Right there, that's an old dried flower spike. So I'm assuming that this came from a division of another plant of someone else's plant but anyways like i said i just want to make sure that i can get as much of the root system down towards the bottom of the vase as possible because that's where i want the majority of the roots to grow i don't want the roots to come out of the pot and i want them to grow down uh, anchor the orchid into the bottom of the container that way later down the road um 
I don't have to repot it. I can just cut the moss down as it grows up. And as it grows up, the orchid's gonna grow up also. So they complement each other. That's what I love about using live sphagnum moss is your orchid and the moss grow in sync with each other. And because orchids grow so slow, um, the moss, if cared for properly, also grows relatively slow. So they grow, like I said, in sync with each other. And you don't have to worry about um, repotting. You don't have to worry about um, taking your orchid out of its paw. You don't have to worry about anything because the moss stays alive and it stays green. Oh, yep. See, there's bugs. Probably we should have checked this before to start throwing stuff in there. But what I was saying was um, because they grow with each other, you never have to repot. You never have to take the orchid out, remove the dead, nasty, rotten potting medium and put it back into something else. This stuff, the center um, will stay preserved. This, the green moss that's in the center will die um, and it'll stay preserved. Um, being in a, an acidic environment um, prevents the breakdown of moss, especially if it's growing with itself. That's why when you, like, there's peat bogs that will be like four feet thick of just um, peat moss. Um, same deal with that. It just builds and compiles on itself and it becomes the perfect acidity or the perfect pH to prevent it from breaking down. And that's what I like about growing in live sphagnum is I'm never going to have to repot this. Um, the only time I feel like I'll have to repot this is um, once it starts growing out, obviously, of the container. And then from that point on, I will deal with it. But this I probably won't have to mess with for the next, oh gosh, probably 10 years or so. Don't quote me on that because sometimes orchids can grow fast, sometimes they can grow slow. It just kind of depends on what the environment is. So we're just going to get enough moss in here. And I'm not going to try to arrange it each strand perfectly straight up and down. That's ridiculous. It will orient itself on its own. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I have this placed... See how it's pos positioned towards the back of the pot? That's because all the new growth is coming out the front here, and I want it to, to grow this way across the pot or across the vase. So this growth is gonna grow out this way. I'm gonna position it so when it grows, it grows up this way, and then this other growth is gonna grow out that way. So in theory, it should grow towards the front of the vase. So I'm gonna get some moss down on this side. I'll use all these smaller pieces for the back side that we're not really needing long strands for. Okay. 